Message from Starfleet Command, top priority. You are listening to the Trek Ranks Podcast, a member of the Tricorder Transmissions Podcast Network. This is episode 168, featuring Abstract Counting. Welcome, Star Trek fans. I am Jim Morehouse. I'm the host of the Trek Ranks Podcast, and tonight we are getting abstract again. We are returning to our popular abstract series of topics. Tonight, it's kind of a weird one. It's just abstract counting, and there's definitely a lot of numbers and counting in Star Trek, and we're going to be covering it all tonight on abstract counting, and we're going to start counting right now with our first guest, Abby Summer, back from the Wisconsin Expanse, her seventh overall appearance. Welcome back, Abby. Thanks, Jim. It is always honor and a complete joy to be here in Top Trek with you. I love it. And number two, we're counting. It's our second guest tonight. <laughs> He's coming to us from the Pennsylvania Corridor. He lists Voyager and Lower Decks among his favorites, making his Trek Ranks debut. It's Brian from the History Trek Twitter account. Brian, welcome back, buddy. Hello. Or welcome to the show for the first time. Thank you. <laughs> yep, glad to be on. Awesome, man. Uh, so, Brian, I forgot to prep you. Hopefully you're ready for our first-time guest. We'd like to get that quick Trek ortho story, see how you got into Trek and if you've seen it all and what your favorites are. So uh, give us a quick snapshot. Oh, yeah. Well, going up to the 90s, I think I just saw reruns on TV. I have this vague memory of... Um, What's the Halloween episode? Cat's Paw. Yes. I just have a vague memory of seeing like the castle and stuff. I don't know for sure if that was the first episode I watched, but I think that was an early one. And then later I just saw on like the TV guide or whatever. Oh, Star Trek's on like three in the morning. Okay, well, let's record it. Turns out it was Voyagers, like season two or season three. So it took me a little while to figure out who are these people and why are they in the middle of nowhere space-wise. But um, then of course, watched most of Enterprise first run. And then with the advent of streaming, it made it real easy to catch up with everything else. I've seen it all. I just watched the new Lower Decks this morning, or this afternoon. So. <laughs> yes, we are. Lower up. Decks, Lower Decks, We're Lower the last Decks. Lower Decks. I love any Star Trek origin story that begins with, I saw Cat's Paw. <laughs> that's, as, that's as good as it gets. Okay, let's do this. Let's get into our Trek Ranks recalibration. You can recalibrate the regulators now. Will do. Okay, the Trek Race Charter has two clauses. One, we rank Trek so we can have a fun conversation about Star Trek, and we're counting again. And two, the ranks don't matter. We just use them as a framework to have a deep dive conversation about all the things we love about Star Trek. And as the Vulcan Master likes to tell us... Infinite diversity. In infinite combinations. There are no wrong answers at Trek Ranks. This show is all about sharing the things we love about Trek, and we love it all from TOS to TNG, straight through the Enterprise and the Kelvin timeline, and now Discovery, Picard, Strange New World, Short Treks, Lower Decks, and Prodigy as well. It's all fair game here on the Trek Ranks podcast. Black alert. Black alert. And a reminder that this episode of Trek Ranks is current through the Star Trek Lower Decks fourth season episode, Something Borrowed, Something Green, the 897th episode of Star Trek across the past 56 years. We're closing in on 900. And one final reminder that we use episodes as a shorthand term, but the 13 films are always in play as well. Hailing frequencies open. Thank you, Mr. Warf. You can hail me directly on Twitter at Trek Ranks or at Enterprise and Extra. And you can see our extensive rankings of all the tracks at trekranks.com. And don't forget to call and leave us a message with your own picks at 609-512-LLAP. That's 609-512-5527. Okay, to wrap it up, Abby and Brian, let everyone know and then get a hold of you on Subspace. Abby. All right, so if you want to find me personally, I am on Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it, and Mastodon and Blue Sky, though I hit September, so, you know, give me some grace. I'm not on anywhere much. But I'm at Abby M. Summer. That's S O M M E R. And if you want to follow my podcast, First Flight, which I do with the wonderful Chris and our host, Emerita Melanie, uh, we talk about Enterprise every single episode of every single season in order. And we're closing in on the end of season two. And there is good stuff coming up and good stuff that's been there. So come and find us. We are on all of those places, plus Facebook and Instagram. And we come out the same place that Trek Ranks does on YouTube under the Tricorder Transfer. Missions Network. 
And all of those are at First Flight Pod. And, and it's still Twitter. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Brian, how about you? How can people get a hold of you? Um, I'm still on Twitter at history underscore Trek. Um, I've started branching out to some of the other Twitter substitutes, whatever you want to call them, all the same handle. Probably the best place to find me is on Facebook with the Star Trek Watch Party group. Oh, cool. Uh, we started in March of 2020 in the middle of the pandemic, and we watch two or more episodes every night. We chat along with it and just have a great old time. So you can join the group, and we'll give you the link every night. Just have a great time watching Star Trek. Fantastic. I am not on Facebook, but I'm still on Twitter. And I got to start promoting Blue Sky because that's going to be the alternate that yeah. I go to when Twitter is finally gone. <laughs> okay. So, Blue Sky, we're there. Let's do it. Let's get into our diagnostic cycle to get into this show. Computer, run a level two diagnostic. All right. So, for this diagnostic cycle, I'm just going to quickly define what we mean by these abstract topics that we do. So it's just, it's another weird, interesting way for us to talk about Star Trek and don't overthink it, right? There's really no hidden message or anything. It's just our panel choosing five completely abstract choices related to the topic. So this is the seventh time we've done an abstract topic. The first one we did way back on episode 56, we did top five shapes and that kind of opened me up to the abstract idea. So since then we've done abstract three, the letter H, abstract one, abstract silence, and we did the letter T recently, and now we're doing abstract counting, just counting. So that's it. A bunch of abstract topics could literally mean anything to anybody. And it's just a, it's a great way to have a conversation about tracks. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get into our prime directives now, because I'm dying to hear how everybody broke down their, their list for this show. Because they know about prime directive. They know everything I know, sir. And you're about to know everything we know about our prime directive. So, Abby... Let's start with you. How did you get into this topic and narrow, narrow down a list? And how did you define counting? I can't wait to hear it. All right. So I love these abstract topics because it lets you pick just about anything and the strangest little things pop out. So I just started with making a list of everything I could think of that had to do with counting or numbers. And then I went through because I'm a data geek and I like to spreadsheet and I color coded things and I put them together. And then I decided, am I really doing like things that are actual counting or not? And I decided I kind of wanted a little bit of everything. So my picks kind of go from the more concrete actual counting all the way through to things that are kind of ideas to the more nebulous at the very end. So I just kind of wanted to spread the love around because I just had way too many ideas for this one. Okay, that sounds like a potpourri of counting. <laughs> Abby was on our Trek, Trek Ranks potpourri for episode 150. That is going to be all over the place. I love it. Uh, Brian, how about you? How did you try to, try to tackle your first prime directive? Well, I didn't really, I mean, it's an abstract topic. So like I kind of said, it, it's broad, but you got to narrow it down at the same time. Um, you'd mentioned you didn't want to be the same as countdown episode. Right. Yeah. So I made sure to go back and write down which episodes are mentioned in that. So I didn't pick any of those. Um, first, it was just what episodes first come to mind. Some of the more obvious picks, um, like I kind of mentioned before, I took off my list. I figured it'd be too obvious. I mean, counting numbers, I just kind of went with there, and some of those yeah. worked, some didn't. I have a couple that are a little bit abstract, and some that are a little more concrete. Um, I didn't really, I guess I kind of went more abstract, more concrete, but just kind of whatever came to mind seemed to fit. I love it. That's a great way to do it. And I forgot, I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to mention the diagnostic cycle. So we... We did our buzzer beater episode back on episode yeah. 92. And then Abby was actually on that show, coincidentally. That was the first one I was ever on. Oh, it was. There you go. So we, the goal is to not make this a repeat of buzzer beaters. So we're trying to do counting that's not necessarily uh, that type of buzzer beater countdown. And so I avoided that. I made sure I wasn't picking anything remotely similar to that from episode 92. And then... I wanted to get into, I wanted to make sure that there was actual counting going on with all five of my picks. Someone is actually counting numbers. It doesn't have to be every number in the count, but at some level there, you see other numbers in the actual counting moment. Mm -hmm. And I included, I included the counting in all of my, uh, I include that count in all my recaps. So you're going to hear not only the, the, the count number, that's the final number, but all the references 
in the numbers leading up to that number in my picks. So that's going to be a lot. <laughs> so that's it. All of my all of my picks are legitimate counting moments and not just like numbers that maybe feel like counting. It's actual counting. Okay. I've said counting way too many times. Let's get out of here. Let's go third Romoticon. Third Romoticon. One, two, three. You're the third, not the first. Introduce us to the order of things. I am a Jem'Hadar. He is a Vorta. It is the order of things. Thank you, Third Romoticon. We are going to get a hold of ourselves and let's recap how we're going to get into our counting five word summary and hashtag to tease our pick. Then we'll each reveal our abstract counting choice and the reasons we're highlighting it. And of course, everyone will highlight one episode to associate with that pick just in case it's not obvious. And after we get through our round of picks, we're going to get some secondary system selections for the picks that just missed our list. And we'll see if we have any duplicate picks. And if we do, you'll hear the Defiant Torpedoes. I don't think we're going to have any tonight. The more I hear your guys' prime directives, and especially when Brian starts talking about the obvious picks, there are no (laughs) obvious counting picks. No way. So I want to hear those in your secondary systems, Brian. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Abby, start with your round five abstract counting. Okay. So like I said, I went from the more concrete to the much more abstract. And my five words are Spock looked for 126 days, hashtag all seven signals. And it's Discovery Season 2, Episode 14, Such Sweet Sorrow Part 2. I love it. Yeah, I just recently rewatched Discovery all the way through. And, you know, it's really good. And season two, for as much flack as it got from people, because Discovery just is a magnet for that, it wrapped up really well. And all the connections that were made and the all seven signals and all the little clues and breadcrumbs that you see going back the second time, it's wonderful. And one of the things I really like the most about that season is Spock and Michael and coming back together. I even like the beard. I mean, I know Michael doesn't, but I personally prefer the beard. (laughs) And I love that he looked every single day for 126 days and he's talking to himself about her. I mean, he misses her and that relationship resonates for me and with me, both in Strange New Worlds as Spock continues and when Michael is continuing in Discovery. They are still pieces of each other and i think there's nothing better that shows that than these seven signals and i mean they've been counting them the whole season they started the season with counting them and they ended the very end of the season with the final counting of the seventh signal appearing and so it had to make my list counting the seven signals from the red angel i love that that is i never that would never even occur to me uh, spectacular, spectacular choice. Well, and Spock counted those days too. So it's like a sub pick. There's counting and counting. So I was pretty proud of that one. Yeah. The the seven signals were on my, my secondary list. Oh, they Yay. were. Okay. I didn't that think was... about Spock counting the, the days. I didn't even think, I didn't really watch the episode. But yeah, no, oh, you yeah, have There's both, seven you have signals both. in season two of Discovery. But again, I figured that probably somebody's going to pick that. So like, I'm going to leave that off. <laughs> but yeah, you know, at first you don't know where those signals are, are, are leading to, you know, and then like, here's how to rescue people and stuff, but they, they do bring it all together quite nicely at the end. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so good. I mean, both those things, the counting, I love it. Personal log, star date 120.1.7. One hundred twenty four days have passed since your disappearance. It has been difficult, but we've managed not to reveal the truth of Discovery's fate to Starfleet. To have done so was to risk rendering your sacrifice meaningless. And I was just thinking, this is the second time this has come up recently on Trek Ranch, because we had our stargazing moments, and I think mm-hmm. I think Jen Tiff picked this as one of her stargazing moments. So I love it, because it fits both. This is fantastic. It, Jen has great taste. And of course she does. All right, Brian, how about you? What's your round five pick? Uh, my first one is false flag attack, Breton's peace. My hashtag is mysterious torpedoes. So it's Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country. Ooh. It, but it ends up being the Klingon ship fired on the other ship. And everybody's like, the Enterprise, we didn't fire. Did we fire? And then Scotty comes back on the bridge later and says, we manually counted every single torpedo oh in our inventory. <laughs> so good. We didn't fire anything. 
<laughs> Although it looks like the computer graphics shows those fires. I'm not sure how that worked out, but more sabotage from the agents or whatever. But um, they're just hazing. Yeah. I almost put those number three because of the banquet scene, but I couldn't find any soup involved in that. So I didn't put it oh. number three. <laughs> oh. More sabotage. So wait yes. a second. So I was, who said they actually say they counted, they manually counted? Scotty all says the, he did a, oh my God. He manually, or he says he manually accounted for. Okay, yeah. No, that's which good. means they had to go in and that means they have the count physically lay eyes on. Actually count them. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, we have 47 torpedoes in our inventory. Yes, we have 47 torpedoes in our launch pit. Yeah. I know. mean, you cannot have more abstract counting than <laughs> the undiscovered country and the manual count of the torpedoes during that uh, did we fire, who fired scene <laughs> at the beginning. Incredible. Uh, Abby, any... Uh, any take on this? There are, there are going to be no duplicates tonight. I'm just going on right <laughs> Well, this is the kind of Trek minutia that I absolutely adore and come Love to Trek it. ranks for. So that is an exceptional pick. Never even was a blip on my radar. And you could hear me laughing and exclaiming as you're explaining because it is so good. So bravo. That was Excellent. I have I have nothing to add. You've said it all. Yeah. If you if you you could hear me going from what to laughing and loving. Yeah. Exactly. I, once I understood it. Brilliant. Okay. Here is my round five pick. This is the first time I've chosen this episode, which is a little bit surprising <laughs> to me. Infamous episode. Oh boy. Five words and a hashtag. Not programmed to respond. Hashtag. Counting to 500 Stellas, and it is <laughs> from TOS iMUD season two, and it's the 500 yes. Stellas. And I fully realize that under the scope of 2023, there is some problematic uh, issues with this episode and maybe even this pick. But I've lived with this Harry Mud joke about his uh, wife for 50 years, and it's just for me, it's the most satisfying conclusion of a bonkers episode of Star Trek. And I love when she shows up at the end and it's Stella one and she's, you know, doing her, where have you been? What have you been up to? Have you been drinking again? You miserable <laughs> sot. And then Stella two, and he's begging Kirk to reconsider. And then he sees Stella 500. So he's counted Stella one, two and 500 I love this, and I love his, he has this one subtle line, Stella urged him into outer space, not with encouragement, but her continual, eternal, confounded nagging, and he likes to gaze upon her and rejoice in her absence. <laughs> so All right, so there you go, 500 Stella's Abby, what's your take? It's a perfect pick, and you can, again, there's going to be so much giggling in this episode, I think, yeah. because this these are just perfect picks, and again, nothing that crossed my radar, and that episode, it, there are moments in it that make you cringe, but it is fun at the heart of it, you know? It really is, so great job highlighting that, and 500 Stella's would be intense. <laughs> Great counting. It, it is fun at the heart of it. That is a good way to kind of wave over all the issues. Uh, Brian, any take on? I'm I didn't a... even again, like she said, I didn't even think about this. If I had, I probably would have said that's too obvious of a pick. <laughs> I don't know. I, like I, said, I didn't even come to mind. You know, I, obviously, he Harry Mud, the character we see again in, in Discovery. Um, but yeah, the the five hundred android replicas. Of, which turned out to oh. backfire on him, obviously. By, but. by the way, at some point in the episode, they say there are, I didn't realize this, 207,809 androids on Mud's planet. Oh. So more counting. Whoa. <laughs> okay, let's go to round four. Abby, what do you got? Okay, I really like this one. So five words. Good engineers know the difference. Hashtag warp tether. And it's Enterprise season four, episode 15 and 16, Affliction and Divergence. And it's the counting of the NX class starships. And this is where you get to see the NX-01 and the NX-02 that started it all right here. We're counting the first two ships. Oh, they count on it. each other. And I'm sorry, the warp tether is one of the absolute coolest moments in all of Enterprise. And I... I will hear nothing else about it because whether or not it would actually ever be feasible, it's just so neat. And I love seeing Trip on both ships. 
We're seeing him on the NX01. We're seeing him on the NX02. He has, he forgets to change his patch, which I always think is hilarious. But he mentions, you know, a good engineer can see the difference between the two ships. And I like how going all the way back to the beginning with the NX01 and the NX02, and then you see how ships all come from them. And each number is just that little bit different, that little bit more of growth. And that's exactly what the whole series of Enterprise is about. And that bridging of now and what we see in the far future in Star Trek. And I couldn't count. We couldn't be counting other ships and their registry numbers if we didn't have the NX-01 and 02 to start it all off. Spectacular. So good. I'm just, I'm going to be counting NX-01, NX-02 in my head all night. So good. And those, <laughs> I mean, listen, the the warp tether scene is one of the coolest scenes in all of Trek. You said that it's a true fact. It is so great. And this pick is spectacular. I love it. Brian, what's your take on the NX-01 and the NX-02? Uh, we just watched this episodes Monday night with the, with the watch party. So awesome. uh, the episodes are pretty fresh. But yeah, that warp tether scene is pretty cool. And the whole thing with Trip, with, with a, yeah, Trip wanting to know why the make over there for Lieutenant Reed. But um, yeah, I, again, I never even thought of, of the registry numbers on, on the on the end. I mean, the enterprises, I probably wouldn't have thought about it's more the letters, but yeah, the NX01, NX02, and then, you know, we presume there's others beyond that. We don't, I don't think we actually see them on screen, but. I love too that this is counting of two. <laughs> One <laughs> yeah. and two, fantastic. Oh, that makes me wonder about, was there, is there an NX03 at some point? Mm-hmm. I've never heard that. Those words said before. I think in the Anyways. books, but not uh, oh, in the screen. books. Okay, of course there's some in the books. Brian, I think they're following the shuttle, the okay. shuttle maybe. Yep. Theme. Brian, what's your number four pick? This one was mentioned on a different abstract episode, but for a totally different reason. So cool. I decided to keep with it. Five words when the train comes in, hashtag everybody rides. TNG season two, episode 12, The Royale. Woo! It's- <laughs> It's data playing poker is the main thing. I know he does a couple other episodes. You know, he's in, or also playing blackjack, and the Texans like, you know, the odds of he's like, yeah, <laughs> hit me again. <laughs> hey, I won. It's, and then other, and of course, it starts off with the whole Fermat's last theory, which I'm not a mathematician, so I wouldn't even begin to try and solve it. But apparently, they did solve it later. But when the episode aired, no one knew the answer to it. So um, I'm sure there's plenty of counting and whatever abstract theory that's all about. But um, <laughs> I just love when Data's playing poker, especially in the episode where you time travels or someplace else. Everybody just looks at him like, how can you do that? <laughs> Which ties into the meme of how is Riker the best player on the Enterprise? You've got yes. Data, Jordy, and Troy. And Troy, yep. And, I, him, and Worf would just beat up anybody. So, <laughs> Well, first of all... I- I love that you, uh, I was wondering if a poker pick was going to come up. So I love that we have a poker pick. Second, Riker's good because poker's about the feel too. That's Riker's. No one's better at feeling it out and bluffing than uh, Riker. I mean, there's a scene about it. Pulaski's, when Data's like, I'm going to win this because I know the numbers. And Pulaski's like, "Uh, no, you're not. I think it was Pulaski. Anyway, uh, fantastic. I love the Royale coming up. Abby, what's your take? Well, speaking of weird Trek origin stories, the Royale was the first episode I ever saw. Like, oh, awesome. and that's a weird right. one too. So that's why I woohooed on this. I I have such a soft spot for this episode. I think I picked um, the the unknown astronaut who who died, or the unknown airman who died, as one of my best deaths ever, just because I love this episode. And uh, yeah, what a fun pick. And and you're right. This. There's so much counting in this, and these are more varied types of chance games than we usually see. So I love that it highlights the poker plus the other games of chance in there. And I love that you referred to it, abstract math theorem in an abstract pick. So I didn't even a, think of that part, but yeah. Yeah, double gold star. Uh, I love it. I have an abstract math theorem in my secondary systems. <laughs> okay, let's go to my round four. This one I was thinking could be a duplicate, but we'll see. So I and I picked this one just a few episodes ago, just a couple episodes. Ago. I'm doing it again. Five words and a hashtag. Targeting a grand subspace finale hashtag. Counting to 344 wow. electron volts. It's Ooh. Strange New World subspace rhapsody, and it is the grand finale song. We are one. So it's the moment when Uhura tells everybody that they need 
everybody needs to sing raise their volume get loud because singing is going to cause a spike in this quantum probability field that they're in the middle of and if they get to 344 giga electron volts it will smash all the different realities and get them back to normal and there won't be a Klingon boy band anymore on the Kasinga <laughs> class. So I love this. And the, 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 the count, I don't have the count on this one because it's just all over the place, but they keep showing that graphic where it's going from zero to 50 to a hundred and then 344 and they hit it for the grand finale subspace Rhapsody. that I have watched this with my girls that I never <laughs> thought of this okay. because seriously, it's at least once a week around here and we sing the songs every time we're in the car and the Klingon bit might be their favorite of all of it. Like we have to turn it up. We have to jam. They're doing little dances in their car seats. Like I can't believe I didn't think about this, but how perfect, like that is counting right there. You it's watch legitimate the count counting. Rise. They're literally it's legitimate counting. counting. Yeah. Everyone's and I, <laughs> I love at the end when it is almost there and Spock is not joining in that final little dance number yeah. unless he absolutely has to. And then he can see the count isn't there. So he joins in and it pushes it over. Like that so is good. both. Oh, that's the perfect. Perfect. I love it. So, my smile hurts my so face. Good. I'm smiling so big with that. Spectacular. Pick. Brian, what's your take on the musical? Subspace I Rhapsody. tried to figure out how to get Strange New Worlds into it just because it's more <laughs> recent, but I didn't. Uh, the episode didn't crash my mind. I had the soundtrack. I was just listening to it this afternoon. I was on a walk when I got home after work. But um, so good. yeah, that's it's a good episode. Like, you know, it's Spock all the time. He's like, well, okay, I guess I'll join in, but why could I have to? <laughs> only yeah, to save the galaxy the yeah at 344 i love so this one was so fresh i thought ah, maybe someone will see this as well as counting okay i love it no duplicates we're not gonna have any duplicates not happening let's go to the soup round round three abby what do you got and now as i'm sure that somebody out there has said it's time to pay for the soup all right so i always try to make this actual super food but didn't happen this time but i really like this one so my five words are, they still call you seven. My hashtag is a classic one. Resistance is futile. And I'm talking about Borg designations and how much counting is involved oh in where a Borg is in the cube and what part of their matrix and all of that. And I'm highlighting Voyager season six, episode two, survival instinct, because that's where Seven goes back and makes that mini collective when they crash land and they start to reassert their individuality. And, you know... I, I know that some people say that this is an overrated episode, but I always find, what? yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> it just made some, a big list of being overrated, and Are you I kidding? think this one has so much heart. I don't care if we've seen similar stories from Seven. This is one where she takes initiative. This is one where she is, you know, survival is not enough here. You have to look past it, and board designations are cool. I mean. The fact that she keeps hers as her name is part of her reclaiming herself, but also part of her recognizing that she will always have that little piece of the Borg in her, just like we saw in Picard over and over again. And I think the Borg are so neat. I think the fact that they most of the time don't have names, just designations is part of what makes them so creepy because we talk all the time, you know, oh, you're just a number to your company or whatever. Now in modern times to the Borg, you literally are just a number and it couldn't be counting without talking about the Borg designations. Uh, perfect. I cannot believe I didn't think of Borg designations as counting because that is, that is right there. <laughs> that is so good. 
Brian, what's your take on board designation, survival instinct? Uh, that's, that's a good one. I, I I think seven of nine crossed my mind, but I didn't go any further than that. I didn't try. I just, you know, oh, yeah, she's got a number in her name, but I didn't try for how to find yeah, her you name could have, you, you could have done like a small little board collective, too, with like the seven, yeah. like when she makes Harry, you know, she demotes yeah. him to like three of. And that comes seven. up again <laughs> in the card where, you know, um, well, how do you know that she was the the the, the fake LaForge? Well, the real one called me seven. Oh, yeah. Called me Commander oh, Hansen. Yeah. So good. So I knew exactly. she was the fake. So, and of course, yeah. at the end of the season, we're, yes, seven of nine from um, the captain. He recognizes her actual name. But yeah, that's, uh, that's a good I one. It. I love it. Such a great pick. Okay, Brian, your round three. And has food, but not. I mean, it's adjacent in the episode. It's not a part of the pick. My five words are from security, the science officer. Hashtag is fractured time. Star Trek Prodigy season one, episode eight. I'm a muck. Oh, Again, this is- I love you. So good. I was trying to figure out how to put Prodigy. And at first I thought it was going to be the episode where they all get their backstories. And I could do something with, with um, Jankum. Like he made me mention how many times he was woken up or had to fix the ship. But that didn't come up. And again, we just watched this one the other night with the watch party. So I was like, hey, wait a minute. This fits my pick perfectly. Because in the end, I don't think I would notice this until I watched it this time. And he was looking for numbers. After everything's fixed and Janeway looks at Rock Talk and she looks at the wall behind her. She's got all the yeah. tally marks on the wall. Yeah. It took you 276 tries to build this thing. Yeah. I taught myself how to do all this. Oh, well, yeah. what do you need me for? They just tell me what I need to build. They didn't tell me what to do with it. Yeah. Like, come on. Such so, a great you know, thing. She had food in her in the quarter when she was alone, but I don't yeah. think she ate any soup, whatever the goop was. Well, was. Well, <laughs> Nutri-goop. Nutri-goop. Yeah, there awesome. you go. But just the, as soon as you said this, the shot of all the tallies on the wall are, is yeah. so uh, so emotional, so well done. Really, really fantastic pick. Such good, yeah. such good connection uh abby what's your take well okay this because it is my younger daughter's favorite episode of star trek ever has been the episode of modern trek that i've watched the most because she's yep. an obsessive little kid and <laughs> you know it's short so i cannot believe this didn't cross my mind because i love this episode and my heart is just with rock like so much how much time she had alone and all that she had to teach herself and pull herself up and i love the fact that rock talk is such a role model for young girls and they're watching her do this and be self-sufficient and teach herself and pull herself up and have persistence in science and math and she's a non-traditionally sized woman everything rock in here is wonderful and her counting in tally marks is just you know, you see tally marks on walls in jails and prison, right? And here she is counting down her science attempts. It's the absolute opposite of why, but it's still a tally of how long you have been alone and apart from the people you love. So what a beautiful abstract pick. Bravo. Yeah, so good. And such a great, fantastic episode of Prodigy. I love it. We're really covering a lot of ground here i'm gonna tell you we have yeah lots of incarnations already picked this is gonna be great okay try to spread it out it can be fun stats at the end oh i can't wait i'm only keeping the series right now but that's gonna be enough and it's gonna be big zero duplicates i'm sure of it (laughs) okay round three for me my number three pick and i this was you just mentioned it somebody picked the Royale previously in an abstract. I actually picked this episode previously in abstract uh, threes for something. So it's just kind of weird, but I'm picking it again because I guess this episode is an abstract magnet for me. So here we go. Five words and a hashtag. Cole's critical Klingon cloak cracks. Hashtag counting to 133 micro jumps. It is from Discovery wow. Season 1, Into the Forest I Go, and it's Stamets and Discovery's 133 micro spore jumps that they need to do to reveal the location of the sarcophagus ship uh, that Cole is on. Uh, I mean, he's about to destroy the Pavan homeworld. And what's happening here, I have it written in my notes, because otherwise I wouldn't remember 
micro jumps. Each one is performed in rapid succession, which will provide a three-dimensional snapshot of the cloak Klingon ship's position. The readings will be received from every necessary vector in under four minutes. Fantastic scene. Just a really great episode of Star Trek where Stamets and Tilly, all this tension that they're putting in with the jumps, and they show nine. She says 96 more jumps, and then they go jump 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65. They actually show all those, and then they get to 133, and then they get to the end. And, yeah, it's just really cool. This whole episode sets up all the Mirror Universe stuff with the Stamets and the Forest, and you've got Cornwell, Admiral Cornwell, and Laurel showing up, and the great Kenneth Mitchell is Cole, of course, and Burnham and the sarcophagus ship. I just love it. It's a fantastic. Episode. There's one bad thing about this episode, and that's that Cole dies. I hate that. I'm still not <laughs> over it. I love that Klingon. He was so good. Abby, what's your take on Into the Forest I Go and the 133 spore jumps? You are correct. This is a fabulous episode. And again, I can't believe I didn't think about this. Like I said, I just rewatched Discovery and I particularly love Cornwell. Like, could be my favorite admiral of all time. I really yeah. enjoy her portrayal and this is such a good episode for her. And I really like Stamets as a character. I like his growth. I like his arc. I like how we've seen him push himself for science and then push himself personally. I this I remember watching this scene and you were right when you said tension and you hear it in Tilly's voice while she's counting yeah, really. like and that speaks to Mary Weissman's ability because that is all vocal tension and inflection and it is one of those scenes that you're just like oh my god is he just gonna be like a wisp and disappear and poof and be done after all this and you know it, it's one of those moments where you go man Lorca I you're brilliant but and when you go back knowing what we know about Lorca later on, this is an episode where it is crystal clear that this is not prime Lorca. And what a great pick. This is actual counting again and doing it as we abstractly jump around the mycelial network. So very nice. Yeah, the Lorca stuff's brilliant because he sets the whole thing up as like, mm -hmm. we, have to save, we have to save the Pav and Homeworld. Everyone's mm -hmm. on board 100%. And meanwhile, he's just plotting out how he's going to get mm -hmm. this thing back to... Uh, back to the mirror universe so good uh brian what's your take it's been a while since i've watched that uh, that season i mean we watched i've watched random episodes i haven't done a complete rewatch i should probably do that but yeah the couple hundred spore you know micro spore jumps what a great way to so collect all that data they need in such a short amount of time yeah. and not get caught by the klingons and i don't i think if it hadn't been kind of spoiled I don't think people would have realized that I was going to make them jump to the main universe. A hundred percent, they wouldn't. I mean, there's a couple other things that were telegraphed, and I ignored them. And like, oh, that actually was true. But um, <laughs> no, I, I, I've said it a million times. This is this Discovery season one holds up. Would benefit if the if the internet didn't exist either, because we all everyone was just dissecting each episode. So all these spoilers on the internet, people figuring it out. But if you're just an average Joe watching this show. You don't see any of that coming and you're yeah. into it and you're surprised and shocked and love it, especially from Vogue to the mirror. Well, I heard all the theories about Ash Tyler and Vogue and I, for whatever yeah. reason, I'm like, no, you know, you're full. That's not true. Yeah. Right. Uh, one of the podcasts I was listening to, everybody was talking about it. I'm like, no, they're not the same character. So right. I was probably one of like five fans who was actually surprised by that reveal. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what just happened? And it's true. Yeah, so I, I think it was the was fake IMDb page. That was what turned me. I'm like, that is the worst fake IMDb page ever. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> anyway, they did a great job with that, and you know, it just it's it's the kind of thing where an average viewer is not dissecting every piece of Star Trek is enjoying yeah. it a lot more than yeah. us knuckleheads who are <laughs> trying to consume every piece of knowledge. Okay. Here we go. Let's go to round two. Abby, what's your, what's your pick? All right. So I try to spread it around and not repeat series in these big topics like this, but I could not leave this one off. So my five words are 42 have a romantic possibility. Hashtag family trees are tangles and it is <laughs> Denobulan and fam families. And I'm oh highlighting... God. God forbid. Enterprise season two, episode five, A Night in Sick Bay, which... Has some good moments in it, which you can go back and listen to me talk about. But this is one of them. This is a look 
into Denobulan society, which we only get brief glimpses of, and I am dying for more of in modern Trek. We've gotten so much more Enterprise love, especially from Lower Decks, and we saw those Denobulans there. They've been popping up all over the place here and there, so I'm hoping. But they talk in stigma, the Flox and his wife, Fiesel. And then in A Night in Sick Bay, when they're trying to catch the bat and Archer's back and forth and they're working on Porthos in the liquid and all that. Flox and Archer talk about the romantic entanglements. This is where the numbers actually come in. Like they're talking about how many connections there are here and there. And then it's Archer going, Oh, I don't know if I can handle all this. There's all this and that. And Flox is just talking about how wonderfully comforting it is and how, you know, they, they have all this and he misses his wives, but they're very patient and that they have all these connections and family and, and Archer's just like, right. Okay. This is, this is enough. And they've been talking back and forth about all the, the tension and everything. And Flox is just the right person because he has such a different and outside perspective to all of it. And he's blowing Archer's mind and his face there where he's just looking at him going, I can't even comprehend what your family reunions and dinners must be like. And Flux just smiles and keeps going on with what he's doing. So it's it's a perfect Enterprise pick. And I want to know more about Denobial and Families. Yeah, that's perfect. And I don't want to know anything more because it gives me a headache thinking about it. It's <laughs> so great. You know, it's this pick is awesome. When I think about all the different connections and everything, but that moment with Archer and Flux, <laughs> he talks about it so calmly and so, like he just said it like it, it soothes mm-hmm. him, right? So I love that. That is so great. And I think this was the concept was first came out in Dear Doctor, right? He said he had yes. three wives. And then mm-hmm. they obviously talk about it in stigma when Fleasel shows up. And I'd forgotten about this moment in a night in sick bay. I love this pick. Yeah. Brian, what's your take? That's another one that didn't didn't even cross my mind. Is it, it's just the sheer size of another environment. Looking at um Ray Alpha, you know. 720 relationships, 42 of which could be romantic. Oh, yep. my God. How do you navigate? I mean, it's hard enough navigating today's world with people they have, but something yeah. like that, you know, everybody's got to be related to somebody somehow on that planet or something. I don't know. But, At some level, pretty much. And by the way, that is not even close to the first time a night in sick bay has been picked on track. <laughs> it's been picked many times because it's okay. But for right. me to pick it, it says something. Okay. Like, it's All a right. good Sounds scene good. in an iffy episode <laughs> Sounds good. well to be fair i picked it in the uh, wtf moments so that, <laughs> that, that that's final a scene. good fit <laughs> so okay <laughs> brian what's your number two pick now, this one if i can avoid a duplicate i'm sure i'll avoid duplicates for tonight so we'll see what happens it's already guaranteed no one's picking this else seven ferengi in two vorta hashtag movie yes. ds9 season six episode 10 the magnificent ferengi so I was trying to fantastic, so good. I was trying to figure out. I wanted something with Quark. I was trying to think about something with like counting his lot number or something. Dad didn't work out, but this one, you know, they're 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 growing their. I'll call them an assault team, rescue team, whatever you want to call it. They go get movie from the, the Dominion, and first is just Quark and Raw. I mean, like, we need <laughs> right. more people. Right. So they go to to Nog. Oh, you're Starfleet. You can be the the, the drill sergeant and all this other stuff. And join our team. And, Ron's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Well, how many people are on your team? Ram and folks kind of look at each other and hold up two fingers. Nog thinks for a sec. Shakes his head. Holds up three fingers. We're like, all right, oh. cool. We got three people. And then they do it again. They get the next person. They hold up the four fingers and they hold it again for five. And then when I think when Brunt comes in, like, oh, no, we don't need you. Nobody likes you. He has to walk out. Well, I'm just leaving my ship. And the other guy's like, wait, you have a ship? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Ron, or no, I was just kind of like, and now they're six. Uh-huh. So good. It's just a fun Gala, episode. It's, no, it's, it's it's a spectacular episode. And it, and the correlation with the Magnificent Seven right there, there's, yes. that's what you're talking about, it, the homage there is fantastic. And nice of you to count the, the two Vortas as well, one of which does not make it out alive. So, <laughs> yeah, I hate the Ferengi. Uh, Abby, what's your take on the magnificent Ferengi? So great. I always feel like this is more of like an Ocean's Eleven kind of movie. It's, you know, getting the gang together to pull a caper kind yeah. of thing, which is, you know, Magnificent Seven too, but I, I think... Whichever way you want to count it, seven or eleven, this episode is so fun, and it's it's just comfort food because I mean serious stuff is happening, but it's done in such a way that has 
such joy and heart and you know in the end it's all gonna end up being okay and what a great pick it again didn't cross my mind so i love that we are gonna have all these different picks so good and you know just it is i mean this is a straight magnificent seven homage because in that in magnificent seven they they do the same counting with their fingers to get the seven and then there's a great james coburn moment where he throws the knife and it sticks in the wall in a fence post and they replicate that with Leck, the crazy yes. psychotic Ferengi who throws a knife and corks. And uh, so you have to wonder when they get <laughs> Cousin Gala, he's in a Starfleet holding cell. So who is there to pay? The, <laughs> hey, they're Ferengis. That's the, that. How hard was yeah, that? I mean, who are you paying the the, <laughs> the bail bond to? Starfleet and uh, again, DS9 economy is a whole topic on its own. But I love it. I love it. All right, let's close out round two with, oh, I love this pick. This is uh, my number two pick, five words and a hashtag. Setting the world on fire, hashtag counting to lucky number 10. This is Captain Liam Shaw, no win scenario, Star Trek Picard season three, and it's 10 seats on the shuttle. An all-time oh. classic episode of Star Trek, No Win Scenario, is just all-time great. And here's Captain Shaw telling the story about how he survived Wolf 359. And he's down at this, uh, in the shuttle bay, and there's an emergency evac, and there's like 50 of them, but there's only 10 seats on the shuttle and then, you know, we waited for our orders and finally some lieutenant comes down and she just starts pointing you, you, you. And now she's pointing at me. Why me? I'm just some dipshit from Chicago. Now I'm lucky number 10. She didn't count herself. Get in. That's an order. Just the most emotional, powerful scene almost in the history of Star Trek. It is right up there. It's all time great Star Trek. 50 of us made it down to the life deck. But uh uh-oh, there's just one life pod, 10 seats. The thing is, we were all friends. They were all my Jack Crusher. We weren't, we didn't fight over who should live and who should die. Uh, we, We waited for orders and then finally, some lieutenant comes down and she just starts pointing. You, you, me. She's pointing at me. Why, why me? I'm just some dipshit from Chicago. Now I'm lucky number 10. She didn't even count herself. Get in, she says. That's an order. There's a spectacular moment of acting of Todd Stashwick counting off this lieutenant, counting the 10 people that are going to get on this shuttle, no questions asked, and take off, and the rest of them are going to die. Incredible. Uh, Abby, what's your take? No-win scenario, Captain Shaw. Well, first of all, you do a good Shaw impression. <laughs> That's You have the gravitas. And Todd Stashwick, what a gift he has been. This is a fantastic pick and <laughs> there's not a smiling face on this one but yeah right. it's got just as much feeling behind it because this was you know tension again the tension of this and you're watching him and absolutely mesmerized by this really long speech but it's so good and you know he's been counting that in his head every day since so beautiful pick well said he has been brian what's your take on Star Trek Picard season three and no win scenario. If you had video on, you would see me cheering because that was so close to getting picked up for a totally different reason. <laughs> oh, I was really? on my list. It got it got knocked off. It was like, eh, I have better picks. I was thinking of Dr. Crusher, which is counting the pulses or whatever. Oh, they were. oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Day too, day right? yes. so I just watched this like Sunday, I think. Oh, I was thinking so about good. picking this. But, yeah, you could have easily uh, counted yeah, that. That's, yeah. That's, that, you know, she's just sitting there sick bay. 10, well, yeah, nine, oh, that's eight, so good. Yeah, seven. yep. Next, we're right cool. on target, and they use those to escape. But really I didn't even good. think about that, that other part of the scene. I, mean, I just watched it, but I've been watching it for totally different reasons and you know, different scenes. 
Oh but yeah, he's just sitting there going, there's way more of us that could fit in that shuttle. Survivor's guilt. I so. mean, it was exactly that, survivor's guilt. All right, incredible. What a fun topic. Let's do round one. Begin round one. Abby, what's your number one abstract counting? Okay, I like this one a lot. Five words, five digits, totally normal star date. Hashtag <laughs> utter nonsense. <laughs> and it is Stranging World season two, episode seven, those old scientists. It's and so it's good. star dates. I mean, we know when they started, these were just numbers and people have tried to make sense of them and they have gotten better, kind of, sort of. But I'm sorry, when you go back across the history of Star Trek and no one promised accuracy when they started this, for sure. The star dates make no sense. They are completely abstract. If you were trying to use them to figure something out for real, it would be very difficult because they don't align. And I love when Boimler's making his log in this one and he goes, you know, Boimler's, Ensign Boimler's log, Stardate, uh, the past. And that's kind of <laughs> yeah. how I feel about Stardates because, you know, they're wonderful and we love them, but they are nonsensical. So they are definitely abstract in that sense of the word. Oh my God, I love your five words on hashtag. Five digits, <laughs> totally normal numbers. I can hear Jack Blake <laughs> saying it's yeah. so fantastic. Brian, what's your take on Stardates and those old scientists? I, this is another episode that I, I thought might be something in it. I didn't sit down and actually get to rewatch it. The uh, Stardates, they're all over the place. I mean, like a lot of stuff, especially the TOS, it was the 60s. They yeah, weren't right. playing on the show lasting 60, 70 years and having 5 million spinoffs. So they weren't too worried about continuity. I mean, you just got to look at season one of TOS and who's running, yeah. who's in charge of Enterprise. Like, higher level command it changes every episode it seems even with all that though the continuity is still amazing and they still yeah i mean they do the a way, pretty good job still, it, they got lucky i've said this before like in the first spec spec planning you know spock was a martian right right if he had been yeah. a martian that kills everything that kills star trek forever right because now you can't have this fictional history future so all those things it's incredible and star dates part of it too somehow it still kind of makes sense it doesn't in any way shape or form but everybody still uses them anyway sorry brian yeah and you, you look at you look you had a couple of different people have come up with like here's a chronological watch through of all the star trek and right. you know they try and base it off star date and air date and sometimes they're like well <laughs> that's fun i think this one goes before this episode just because of like character development and stuff but the star dates are all wonky for this episode so <laughs> just kind of throw it in there somewhere between episode six and episode nine yeah. you should be fine yeah. you know. of course but yeah there's like yeah, it's star date sometime in the past i don't really care well it's worth mentioning too that they that when tng started they put that production element into them right with the four right. one four two yeah. for each season so cool and they carried that through all of 90s strike pretty much Okay, Brian, what is your number one pick? Uh, this one was probably the first one that I thought of that actually survived uh, the various reshuffling. Kind of a meta pick, same time as a concrete pick. You'll see here in a minute. Five words is unlimited weapons, but not food. Hashtag is coffee <laughs> nebula. Voyager season one, episode six, the cloud. So good. Oh my God. <laughs> so That's brilliant. You, you, I had to look up like what episode this topic is actually mentioned because I didn't know offhand without looking it up. And you always hear about, oh, well, it's Voyager, you know, how do they get more torpedoes and shuttles? And <laughs> yeah, that, it had to have happened off screen at some point. I mean, whatever. I mean, we, we see them meet with weapons dealers every once in a while. So who knows what happened in between? Hey, lots of stuff uh, happens off this, screen on Star Trek. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. no problem. Thank you, Brian. But this episode specifically mentions, you know, they're trying to figure out how can, you know, how can we, I don't remember it's before they realize the cloud's living or not, but they're like, well, maybe we can use a torpedo or two. And Jamie's like, we only have 38 torpedoes. I love it. It's so great. We can't replace them. And they end up using one or two later in the episode. But, and people, there's, there's, there's websites where they'll sit there and they've tracked all the torpedoes. <laughs> yeah, and so all the they get yep. and, you know, and it's, but it's also, you know, this is the first time we see Sandrine's which oh, comes yeah. up yeah. several times in Voyager. And it's the first time we get a mention of the medicine bundle and Chakotay spirit guide. Okay. Now again, okay. the medicine bundle gets replicated how many times? Because it gets, you know, 
the shell gets blown up two or three times if it, <laughs> and he has it with him. So either he beams out with it or somehow he has duplicates. Again, it's TV. Don't look too deep into it. But um, I've never thought of that. I love it. They have the ability to make all the weapons they want. Um, I mentioned off screen that I was watching Parallax and that's when they mentioned the holodecks are separate power grids. We don't have to worry about that. Somehow yeah. replicators are rationed, but they have plenty of power for torpedoes and phasers and whatever else. But, you know, probably guess priorities. Safety over food, which can be cooked. All, all off screen. You, you, you answered it right at the very top. I love it. Um, this is a great, I, this is a fun episode too. I picked this for, I think, cold opens because she's doing okay. that tour of the ship and it ends with the, there's coffee in that nebula. It's really great. Yes. Abby, what's your take on the cloud and the infamous Voyager torpedo slash shuttle counts? <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things that people who, who care make fun of it in the gentlest, kindest, most, yeah, hand wave it away kind of way. I mean, even Robbie and Garrett on Delta Flyers talk about, oh, there's another one of those torpedoes we don't have any more of. And it's just, it's fun, you know, and Yes, I'm sure they could have stopped and restocked a million places, and that probably would have been an incredibly boring episode because it would just be inventory and moving crates. But uh, it, what a great pick, because as soon as you picked it, I'm like, yep, that that that's so Voyager. It's just so Voyager. And so what a great thought. I never would have picked this, but it's absolutely perfect. Like I said Voyager is what got me hooked, so I had to put a Voyager pick in there somehow. That's so great. I am so glad. I was like... I'm looking at my stat count, which we're going to hear in a minute, but I was hoping you weren't going to pick a certain few series and you didn't. I was so glad when you picked Voyager because this count is awesome. Okay, let's go to my round one. And I got to tell you, this is one of the reasons I love doing Trek Rank because you just never know, despite all of our decrees and declarations. Oh my god, we have oh. a duplicate. Here we go. Five words and a hashtag. Wish they'd gone to seven. Hashtag counting to six Ferengi. And of course, oh. I was gonna pick this. <laughs> One of my favorite episodes of Magnificent Ferengi. I love the movie The Magnificent Seven. And I love this count to the six Ferengis to save Moogie. And let's just rattle them off again. We have Quark and Rom, they're one and two. As, as Brian said, Nog joins them as three. They hold up three. Then Lek joins them, and that is four. Then Gala joins them, and that is five as they're exiting the uh, holding cell. And then Brunt shows up with his ship. He's number six. I wish they had found a way to get all the way to seven and do the well, you get Moogie seven. at the end. But yeah, I guess know. that's I guess Moogie counts as seven. Okay, that's fair. I never thought of that. I'll take There's it. Seven for Angie. That's good. That's good. Not good. seven rescuers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really good. I never really thought of that. Not seven rescuers. So I can live with that. Okay, I'm an idiot. How have I never thought of that? That's okay. another episode. All right, and then you have this whole episode's fantastic. You've got Kevon, Christopher Shea. You've got. Cicely Adams is Ishka, Iggy Pop is Yelgren, Iris Stephen Bear and Hans Beimler wrote this script. It is pure, pure perfection, Magnificent Ferengi, and the Count from the Magnificent Seven. Uh, any further take on this episode, Abby and Brian? Anything to add? Not really. Like I said, there's going to be a duplicate. That was going to be the I, one. I think we uh, covered it. But that's fine. It's, it's, it's a good one. And we got a duplicate, which is fantastic. I can't believe that one of mine didn't come up. I put it on secondary systems for a reason, so I'm ready for that. There you go. Let's do it. Secondary systems. Abby, what do you got? Let's see what you can do with the secondary systems. Okay. Well, the first one, I, I know that I was on the countdown episode, and when I thought of this one, it was one of the first ones I thought of. I'm like, no, it's really more of a countdown, but it didn't exist when the other one was out so i'm gonna put it in and i, I even have five words and a hashtag for these because i really mixed these this list up just like brian till the last minute but it was the five words are huh six seconds to spare and the hashtag is barrier bubbles and it's um disco in season four episode 10 the galactic barrier as they're surfing through the bubbles to get through and they actually have six seconds to spare and they all look at each other like really we had time, like the countdown is stopped in the middle because they they did it. They got there. And I think well, that's hilarious. Well, wait a second. Since you brought that up, I have to bring up, I have the Galactic Barrier too, but I have Tarka and his, uh, and his buddy uh, Oros, his partner, 
And they're counting the digits of the golden yeah. ratio. The golden ratio. And the golden yeah. ratio, I've never heard of this. I'm not a mathematician. I have no idea what this is. The golden ratio is that between two quantities when the ratio between them is the same as the ratio between their sum and the larger quantity. It is an irrational number equal to approximately 1.618 and was often denoted by the Greek letter I guess phi. I don't even know what that is. Sorry, I'm illiterate. But they have the, all those great scenes where they're like they they playing back and forth counting these numbers. So uh, I had Tarka and Oros, and I love me some Tarka. I love it. Galactic Barrier gets two counting picks. Abby, keep going. <laughs> All right, so this is the one I couldn't believe that nobody picked, especially after last week as we record this is Lower Decks. And my five words are Cisco sings and Kira scowls, and my hashtag is Lemon yes. Meringue. And I'm oh highlighting, of course, Alan Moraine, which could oh have been God. the very first thing I thought of when you sent me this topic. And I'm highlighting both DS9 Season 1, Episode 10, Move Long Home, and Lower Decks Season yes. 4, Episode 3 in the cradle of vexalon because Man, when fancy. mariner did the lemon meringue with the hand motions and lemon. everything i literally spot spit water out my nose it was so, so funny and i had already put this on my list i'm like okay well now everybody's gonna have it so i can't believe nobody else did that was one of the ones i'm like that's an obvious pick oh my God. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I did, Boy, the real obvious ones that was one of the first ones i thought of like no, I'm not picking that one. I did sure not think of Al Moraine. That is fantastic. <laughs> so good. Little and I actually don't mind chula. the episode. So no, I, just, I don't mind the episode. Everyone either. loves the episode now. It's fantastic. Yeah, they in, think it's uh, silly, 1993. Amazing. You didn't love it. You didn't love it in 1993. <laughs> um, sorry. Are you any more, Abby? <laughs> I do. I have two more. Um, I have by five words. Come on, one of you knows hashtag accents galore, and it's the five hollow versions of Rios. That we see come oh, together in so Picard good. season one, episode eight, Broken Pieces. So just good. watch this one. Every time I am just wowed by how amazing this scene is. And I, I just, I love the idea that there are five chunks of you, how how abstract that is. So I had to put that one out there. And they were revealed in like a counting way because you it was yeah. across a, a, a stream of episodes where they eat like yep. there's a new one and a new one. I love yep. it. So good. All right, okay. and my last one is just for you, Jim. And my oh. five words are the bane of Jim's existence, hashtag two parters count as one. And it's the episode count. How many episodes are we on? Because earlier this episode, you said <laughs> no. 897. No. And on Twitter no. today, it was going around that it was 900. And no. I just talk no. about abstract counting. Here it is. And I'm highlighting Prodigy's Lost and Founds part one and two, which even whenever you see it listed, is just as one big episode, one episode. you can't separate it's one episode, it. so people yeah, all good things go. that one was just for you all good things is one episode i mean you i can rant about this for 30 minutes sorry go to trekranks.com go to our every episode list count that is the best and only way to count star trek episodes apologies all good things is not two episodes no it's no, no. one says all good things part two it just doesn't happen brian what do you got well, the question then remains: when, where, where, where do you think we're going to hit a thousand? At the rate <laughs> oh, we're going, I mean, it, we, I mean we're on the hiatus, but we're it's going to be a while. But it takes a little bit longer, especially in the new, new, this new kind yeah. of app, new shorter seasons. But we get more, more series, so we'll see. Right, we already mentioned no win scenario and move along home, and last week's lower deck episode is all counts the Alan Rain. I'm surprised Tribbles didn't show up both the episodes uh, with, with the number of trouble get the exact number yeah. like yeah there's this many troubles and they multiply this many and it makes it else funny when when dax does insist and then spock repeats it and sits there just kind of looks at Dax. so like, i have yeah. triples in my secondary systems but i have Yay. it as spock counting the years it will take uh, for cyrano jones to pick up all the triples yeah. 17.9 <laughs> years <laughs> probably the only other one i had that i thought would be like obvious would be chain of command with the card and the number oh, of lights. lights. The four lights, yeah. Yes. Of course. Yeah, they four lights, yeah. Oh, my God. That's it. That's, um, okay, that one's kind of one That's a good one. I didn't yeah, think it's another one we just recently watched as a group. Wolf in the Fold, where at the end, they're telling the computer to calculate the number of pi. Oh, right. Mm. That's really uh, good. Yeah. Yes. And the other one that was on my list, and I took it off, it didn't quite match, and maybe, well, maybe a little too abstract, was Star Trek Four when they're Sting shouting around the sun, they're counting up the warp speeds. Uh, you don't see that very often where it's that warp one, warp two, warp yep. three, warp four, warp five. You just warp nine, let's go. 
and they they punch it. That's good. By the way, there's nothing too abstract in abstract topics. <laughs> I said okay. that one was on my list, and I was like, oh, I like that one. That made me on instead. That of course makes me think of a couple of Enterprise moments, like the first time Fallen to, Hero. Yeah, yeah, Fallen Hero's first time they go to warp five, and then of course yeah. first flight when yep. they're counting up to warp. But uh, two, right? Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. Yeah, that's okay. a good episode. This is great. Oh, all they're good both tips. really good episodes. Okay, I have a couple more. So my obvious one that I didn't pick is my toughest cut was Year of Hell because they do a, oh. a daily count. So they have day one, of course, 32, 47, 65, 70, 73, 133, 161, 207, 226, 257. And then they go back to day one in Year of Hell. I also had temporal edicts because there's a whole lot of counting going on <laughs> with buffer time. I had cause and effect because data is counting threes everywhere. Yeah. And then oh, I had parallels. Captain, we're receiving 285,000 <laughs> hails, which is always one of my favorites. And then my last, my special shout out, I almost was going to pick this, but honestly, I didn't pick it because I didn't want to do the, the, the work on it. Was coming up with that the, the Voyager counting the light years to get home, and all oh. the different chunks that they uh, cut off. Oh, yeah. it wouldn't have taken too much to figure it all out, but of course they start. I with, think there's a list somewhere. Yeah, there's there's, there's, there's memory off of the other online. fan sites. Yep. So they start. I'm with hoping for a mini feature years. on the documentary on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that would actually be good. That would be a good thing to have in, on. to the journey. So they start with seventy thousand, and then of course they end up at about I think thirty or thirty-five thousand uh, by the time they get to Endgame. Okay, incredible. Starting the journey, uh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole write up in 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 the Voyager um, entry on Memory Alpha. Oh yeah, I'm probably right there. About, it's called shortening the journey. I have a bookmark every time we're watching yeah. an episode with with the party of like Brian. What's this? I'm like. Hold on a minute. Let me look it up. I love how I didn't want to do the research, which was opening a page on a website of Memory Alpha. <laughs> okay, let's get to our regeneration cycle and go through some quick stats and a recap of our picks. Computer, activate regeneration cycle. Alcoves beta and gamma. Okay, Abby and Brian, recap your picks. Uh, Abby, go. All right, my round five was the seven signals from the Red Angel and Spock counting for 126 days, and that's Discovery Season 2, Episode 14, Such Sweet Sorrow Part 2. My number four was the counting of the NX-class starships, and that was featuring Enterprise Season 4, Episodes 15 and 16, The Affliction and Divergence Duology. Number three was Borg Designations, and I highlighted Voyager Season 6, Episode 2, Survival Instinct. Number two was Denobulan families and their family trees, and that was highlighting the conversation in Enterprise Season 2, Episode 5, A Night in Sick Bay. And my number one was Stardates, just in general, and that was highlighting Strange New World Season 2, Episode 7, Those Old Scientists. Spectacular list. So two from Enterprise, and then one from Voyager, Discovery, and Strange New Worlds. Brian, break down your five. Uh, number five was Star Trek 60 and Undiscovered Country with a manually counting all the torpedoes <laughs> to ensure that did they or did they not fire on the Klingon oh ship. My God. Um, number four is TNG Season 2, Episode 12, The Royale. It's Data playing cards. It's actually more blackjack than poker, but he plays poker in other episodes. And then also... The yeah, of four. course. I said poker before. That was blackjack, of course. But yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's all a card game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also there's that Fermat's last theory, which at that point was unsolved. Oh, yeah. Number three was Prodigy Season 1, Episode 8, Time Amok, where it took Rock Talk 276 tries and unknown actual time amount to build the warp matrix for the proto, proto drive, whatever yeah. you want to call it. <laughs> DS9, Season 6, Episode 10, Magnificent Frangy. You end up getting six Frangy and two Vorta. You add movie, you get seven. And then the last one, or the first one, however you want to count these, was Voyager Season 1, Episode 6, The Cloud, which is where we get introduced to how many torpedoes Voyager has left in her inventory with no way to replace them and then magically to replace them in over seven years. All right, so you spread it around five different incarnations. That TOS, was the plan. TNG, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Prodigy. I love it. I did the same thing. So here's my, my five. And one thing I did... I counted 
from my highest number to the lowest number as I went through my pick. So I mud <laughs> from TOS 500 Stellas, my number four pick, 344 electron volts from Subspace Rhapsody, Strange New Worlds. My number three pick, 133 micro spore jumps into the forest I go from Discovery. My number two pick was 10 seats on the shuttle from No Wind Scenario, uh, Star Trek Picard. And my number one pick, the six Ferengi or seven Ferengi, if you count Moogie, I'm an idiot, the Magnificent Ferengi, Deep Space Nine. So I had TOS, Deep Space Nine, and I had three of the new series. So Strange New Worlds, Discovery, and Picard. And this breakdown is unbelievable. So we did have our one duplicate, which was fantastic. So the only stat I kept was our series breakdown. But not one single series had three picks. <laughs> we had basically nine different incarnations picked. That's awesome. And also one film. Yeah, nine different incarnations picked. So nothing from the animated series, Lower Decks, or Short Treks. But we had one each from Prodigy, Picard, and TNG. And then two each from six different series. TOS, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, Discovery, and Strange New Worlds. So that's why when you pick Voyager at the end there, I was hoping that would, nobody would get to three. And nobody did. That is absolutely incredible. I, that has to be the first time in Track Ranks history not one series has hit the three mark. Incredible. Oh, my goodness. So cool. I almost picked, um, and I don't have my secondary series, was um, Lower Decks when they're in the holodeck simulation with Boiler score. You know, he, he, he oh, get that perfect oh, score. That they're like, yeah. keep on playing. Yeah, like, what? Uh, that was well, you also too. could have picked the number of times Mariner gets stabbed in the shoulder by a knife while she's oh, at yes. the wedding with Tendi. So Somebody said that there, and, and this would require a watching like bunch of episodes. I had no idea how I would have quantified that for Trek rank but because I asked the group I said wasn't it sort of lower decks that's counting I didn't give them any more details than that apparently the number uh there's Darren, Mariner keeps track of how many times she's been in the brig I'd have to rewatch yeah. the series to see that yeah and I wouldn't know how you would count that for something like this because it spread across the entire I don't series. remember that but that she referenced it and you could do it it may it's in there that. I recently rewatched all of lower decks twice in July and August oops not sorry and uh it is in there somewhere but I I can't pull out where it is that. but that's I a good that. one that is that would be a great reference you could easily pick that okay let's get into our initiation of a temporal inversion because it's time to hear from you. initiate temporal inversion initiating and for this week's Temporal Inversion, we are going back to episode 162 in our top five one-off relatives, which is another really super popular topic for us. We got a lot of feedback. And we got a great voicemail in from Jim McMahon, Trek fan underscore 165 on Twitter. Here, listen to this one. Hey, Trek Ranks, it is Jim McMahon calling. This is my top five one-off family members. At number five, I have Demora Zulu from Star Trek Generations, who, as we all know, is Takara Zulu's daughter. Five words. Following in her father's footsteps, hashtag Tuesday. Coming in at number four from TNG, the schizoid man, Dr. Ira Graves, the, the man who considered himself Data's grandfather, which was a great performance in my opinion. Five words, dying scientist takes over Data, hashtag he transfers himself into the computer. Number three, Grand Negus sex son cracked from the Negus. Five words, Quark becomes the Grand Negus. Hashtag Cracks and Rom try to assassinate Quark. Coming in at number two, we have Cecil Flock, Dr. Flock's second of his three wives from the Enterprise episode Stigma. The storyline for that, I thought, was um, was one of the better trip storylines in the, in the series. The five words, Quantum Optics and Trip Tucker. Hashtag Amused by Human Morality. And at number one, I did a little cheating here, Jim. I have several people grouped in here. At number one, I have... Charlene, Bell, and Jeffrey, the Doctor's holographic family from from the Voyager episode Real Life. This, in my opinion, was one of the better Doctor stories. And the five words, Doctor's family program, Beta Rho. Hashtag the Doctor learns about being a father. And I, I have two honorable mentions, Shannon O'Donnell, Captain Janeway's descendant from 1159, and the Whiskey, Anilis' sister from Mortal Coil. Thanks, Jim. Bye. 
All right, great voicemail from Jim. I love cheating, first of all. We know that on Trek Ranks. And I love that number one pick. The doctor's entire family from real life is a very oh. clever one-off relative pick. You picked the, the, the whole family. So great. That's a good episode. Yep. All right, so once again, those picks, more than enough to clear ourselves from this week's Temple Inversion. So as always, I want to thank everyone again for all your great responses to the Trek Ranks podcast. So keep your list coming to me at Trek Ranks on Twitter so we can retweet them. But we also want to hear from you to put together your own list of abstract counting or a list from any of our past shows and give us a call at the Tricorder Transmissions at 609-512-5527. At 609-512-LLAP. Or you can just record it. Send me a DM. We can connect that way. So hopefully we'll hear from you so you can be featured on the next episode of Trek Ranks. And on the next episode of Trek Ranks, we are doing an all-time classic topic. It's one that I've been waiting a long time to do. We're doing the top five Trek tropes. So it's those repetitive or overused themes or topics or devices on Star Trek that you kind of see in different ways over and over again, just those things that make Star Trek feel like Star Trek. So this is kind of a tough one to put you guys on the spot with right off, but Abby and Brian, if you had to pick one Trek trope, and by the way, Voyager's torpedo is definitely one that you can (laughs) pick to their torpedo count and their shuttle count is definitely a Trek trope. But if you guys could think of one off the top of your head, what would it be Abby? I, I got this one. So I was thinking immediately it had to be a cave, but then I was like, no, 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 no. It, it's got to be more than a cave. It's got to be the surprise reveal of of somebody being like some sort of godlike type species mm-hmm. or having more control than you thought. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's perfect, right? So I want to go back to Kevin Uxbridge, who I really think uh-huh. that we... It should go back and and find again because I mean he wiped out an entire species with his mind because he was mad that his wife and his colony got killed. So yeah, let's You're going let's go back to that omnipotent one. Omnipotent beings, I love it. <laughs> uh, Brian, you got one? Yeah, I thought she was going to talk about um, number of times that people turn out to be uh, alien imposter. It happens way too often, I think, <laughs> oh, and it should. But my, my thought was how easy it is to steal a shuttle. I, I think it's early <laughs> TNG, but they're like. Hey, uh, Captain, a shuttle's a unauthorized shuttle launch. Well, did he oh. follow a flight plan? Well, it wouldn't be an authorized if it was <laughs> already pre-planned. You know, it oh, seems way God. too easy to just hop in, especially TNG. And I'm sure Voyager does it too. That That's a fun one. The stealing a shuttle definitely happens it's a lot. It's way too easy. Okay, two fantastic picks for Trek Tropes. I can't wait to record that one. It's going to be so much fun. Channel closed. Reset. Subspace communications. Scrambler code, Riker 1. All right, Scrambler code, Riker 1 acknowledged. Okay, we're going to close this episode out with a huge thanks to Abby Summer and Brian. Awesome having you guys on the show. (laughs) That's Archer the dog. He wants to get fed. Any final Trek Scrambler code, either you want to relay before we depart, Abby. Well, I just want to say thank you again, as always, for having me on. These abstract topics are my favorites because they're so broad and so fun. So it's always good to come on and talk Trek with you. And Brian, what a lovely discussion. I'm so glad that we get to spend this evening together. If you want to find me, all those places are where to go. Yep. First flight pod. Brian, thanks yep. for coming on, man. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's, it's a bit odd hearing, you know, without all the audio stuff, but that's just the magic of the internet. Um, <laughs> like I kind of mentioned at the top and alluded to a few times, the best way to find me is on the Facebook page for Star Trek Watch Party. Um, like I said, we just watch episodes every night. We pick a theme usually every week and go through them and just have a great old time and love, love to that. get our group even bigger. And I mean, if I was ever going to get on Facebook, that would be the reason. All right. Thank you guys. Fantastic, super fun topic. And thank you for engaging with us here again on episode 168 of the Trek Ranks podcast. Archer, as always, I want to close by saying I'm looking forward to standing with you again here in this place where I belong. I call that unexpectedly civil of you, Captain. Yes. Harcourt! Harcourt, Princess Mud, what have you been up to? Have you been drinking again? You answer me. Stella, shut up. You miserable I order you. Toad. Shut up, Stella. Going out all night and then giving me a silly story. Uh, Court. Uh,
Just want to remind everyone again that the entire Trek Ranks catalog is available for you to download and listen to at trekranks.com and on your podcast player of choice. Our episodes never get carbon data, so check out the topics you've missed and maybe just want to listen to again over at trekranks.com. And a reminder to check out our friends Five Year Mission at fiveyearmission.net. They're writing a song for every episode of Star Trek, and you won't believe how great their music is. They also have a podcast at the Trek Geeks Network, so seek them out. You won't regret it. I've got more isolinear processors for you to install. Uh, thanks, but I need to get the power relays online first. Are you sure that's a good idea? Ensign Wildman was assigned to that. This is ridiculous. I'm not going to waste time just because Seven wants to turn this team into her own private collective. She says it's more efficient. Maybe for a bunch of drones. Six of ten, this is not your assignment. Please, stop calling me that. You are compromising our productivity. I am reassigning you to chamber maintenance. Your new designation is two of ten. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're demoting me? Since when did the Borg pull rank? The Starfleet protocol I adapted. I find it most useful. I'm glad you're not the captain. 